Hi guys, today we're going to do some more portrait work and today we're going to do some using watercolours and trying to get a quite an expressive feel to our work, quite an individual, or quite a creative feel, which uses the blending of watercolours based on a particular quite dramatic face. Now this looks like it might be quite complex but in fact it's actually quite simple to do and you can actually then apply this to working on different materials as well to develop your ideas further. Okay, so to start with you will need an image to work from and this is an image that I have found in a magazine. It's a fairly straightforward image of a face. You can find images and you can print them off the internet. You could use an image that you have used in a previous piece of work. You will also need um, a small piece of your tracing paper. And you will need some paper to work on, some cartridge paper, and potentially some manuscript paper or text pages. Or you can work your face onto a collage as well. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, you can do this next task by actually placing your image over some cartridge paper and by pressing on quite hard. However, I think you'll get a better image if you use tracing paper if you have some. Plus, it means you can use it multiple times to do a whole series of experiments with the same image. So, to start with, I'm thinking about, for my tracing, the very simplified version of the face. So where the areas of light are, the features, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. But it's been simplified down into areas of light and dark. Okay. So I'm going to start by doing an outline of the actual face. You'll see that I've put some masking tape down just to hold my tracing paper in face. So I'm going to outline the whole face first of all. And I can see see through to see where my lines are going to be. Doing the whole face coming out there. Then I'm going to do the hairline. And then I can see through in my image, I can see where there is a sort of shadow at the edge of the face here. It's quite subtle, but I'm going to use that. I'm going to start to actually draw myself a bit of a line in where that shadow comes. Now here it goes slightly and leads into the shadow that comes under the lip and I'm going to use that to make my image work well. So I'm following that shadow up there. The top lip, as often is the case, is the darker one. So I'm going to outline the top lip there. And I've just got that shape coming here. You can, of course, adjust your tracing at any time with um, a rubber and change it. I'm now going to pick out the shadow that sits under the nose. There's that little dip that goes down into, I think it's called the filter that comes down there, so I'm going to pick that out as well. That's obviously up to you how you decide to do that, and it will be very much dependent on the image you work from. There's a shadow that comes around the side of the nose, and I'm going to follow that up and draw in where I can see the top of the eyebrow. Now I'm going to define the top of the eyelid and then I'm going to draw in where the pupil is, making a mark where the spot of light is on the pupil there. I'm going to draw a little shadow that's under the eye. This eye, the eyebrow is sort of standing alone. Again, I'm going to do a curve around where the eye is and I'm going to put in where the pupil is. Okay. You can see again on here how that has been picked out. And you can always adjust your work as you go along. I'm going to pick out a little bit of shadow on the ears, a bit of the shape of the outline there as well. Then I'm going to define where the shoulders are. On this guy, I'm going to paint a little bit of the collar, but I'm going to draw some of that in freehand as well, and the shoulder coming over there. Okay, now what I can do, just make sure I've got all those details in there, is I can take that off here, put that to one side, and then, remember with tracing paper, you turn it over, I can then put this on here, and what I would do is put that in place with some masking tape, and then I will start to go back over my lines, applying a little bit of pressure, and that will transfer onto there, and you'll get your drawing back onto there. 
Now, I've got one to speed up so you don't have to watch me transfer my tracing. I've got one that I did a little bit earlier, and I'm going to take that off. And you can see my tracing there, how that's come through the eyes, the nose, the mouth. It looks a bit crude at this point. Anything that I wanted to change, I can always look back at my photograph there and decide maybe I just want to finalise some of those little bits in there. But you can do that with your watercolour. So, I'm going to be using my watercolours. And I'm going to start by maybe thinking about working one side of my face lighter and brighter. And then the other side is going to be more purpley toned. So reds and yellows and oranges on here, moving through to purple. And I'm going to work fairly quickly so that my colours blend in. And I'm going to start by adding some yellow over here. Using the tip of the brush just to get into those points there. Then I'm going to move to a slightly more orangey colour. You can use your palette, remember. Remember, don't just rely on the colours as they appear on your palette itself. Do do some blending on your lid. And I'm going to move in and move into some orange there. And I'm working, moving my paint backwards and forwards while it's wet to get a really good blended effect. I'm now going to go into my pinky red and blend that into there. So you can see on the head very effectively how that develops on. And I'm going to carry that round over the whole of my face. I'm going to stay with yellowy orange tones around here and that is going to blend into slightly darker down there. And I'm going to use the same sort of effects as I come into, say, the eyes. So because it's yellowy orangey here, I'm going to use some of that colour into there as well. I'm going to leave a little spot of light if I can. Don't worry if it ends up being filled up where the pupil is light. But even on a small area like the eye, I want to show some blending as well. So I'm going to go into that slightly pinker tone there as well. Once your paint is dry, you can, of course, always go back in and add a little bit more effect in there. So, and then I'm going to go here, but as I move over, and I'll just show on here, I'm going to go darker, so shifting, using my palette of colours to help me. So starting here, then moving through here, I'm going to go into a deeper pink, and then I'm going to move on to my bluey tones but working with the paint quite wet so it blends in. And I will be building up the whole of the face that way until I end up with the result a little bit like this, okay? I've added in, you can see the collar there. To add some finishing touches to it, you can add some splatter effect onto there as well. So um, you could do get quite watery on your paintbrush and you can add this kind of effect just flicking with the paintbrush afterwards. The other thing you can do is say you want to add some drip effects. Add in some paint where you want them to be. And then hold up your page and you can just add, and this has got quite a lot of water on it, you can add those and you can kind of almost encourage the drip where you would like that to be and adding a little bit more water to get some drips that come down and that can give you quite an interesting effect. A lot of artists that you see on Pinterest um, do this kind of effect. Okay, So you're going to be building up lots of blended colour. You can even do your blending into this as well. So I might bring, say, some blue into there as well so that kind of comes into there. And I'm going to be sort of try and be quite creative with the way that I bring those in together. And again, you could build that up on top with some splatter effect as well. The same tracing is used to create this piece on the manuscript paper with a little bit of colour added in there as well. Um, so do be think about being creative with the way that you produce your images as well. And because you've worked with tracing paper, you can do multiple ones. It gives you lots of opportunities. Look at the artists that are on the PowerPoint to give you inspiration as well. Always remember, I am showing you a technique, but if you want to take it further, take it in your own direction, be more specific with colours, and you want to keep a tighter range than you can, 
but use this as a guidance and um, very much sort of explore and enjoy the process. Okay, good luck with your portraits and I look forward to seeing them.